All right, I'm Brent Leary. I'm Paul Greenberg. We are the CRM players, uh, sleepless in Seattle. Yeah, sleet, but sleet filled <laughs> yeah. in Seattle. It's definitely not snowless in Seattle. Oh my God. We picked a great time to come to Seattle. Yeah, the first time in what, 200 years <laughs> it snowed? I said if we could only have picked a better time in 1804. <laughs> right. But hey, Things do happen when we come to the town. That's, <laughs> <laughs> that's right, the worst snowstorm in the history of Seattle. Actually, things happen when you announce the CRM watch list. Yeah, that was interesting, actually. Uh, Wait a minute, what year is this for the watch list? The th well, it's the 13th year, but I had that break last year. So it's not the 13th consecutive year, it's the 12th actual one and the 13th year. So this is like... Doctor Who. <laughs> <laughs> they they have been around since you know sixty three, but they had a little break in and then they that's came right. back. You re did the re reboot. So this is the reboot of the watch list. That's the that's <laughs> right. It's the first female watch list. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so all right. How is this one different from the previous years? It was a little strange. So in previous years with the watch list I would have you know, 120, 130, 140 entries, but there would be a ton of emerging little companies who really didn't have a chance in hell to win it. Yeah, but they put in the effort, you know, filled out the questionnaire, and hopefully it benefited them, but they, it's an impact award. How do you have impact when you barely, nobody ever heard of you, right? So, <laughs> uh, you know, and, and again, I'm not trying to denigrate them, it's just, it was really kind of a deck really badly stacked against them. Yeah, it wasn't really fair to them going up against, no. you know, like the big guys yeah. that have been around forever. Right? Yeah, I mean, how are they going to beat SAP or Oracle or Microsoft, Salesforce, any of these guys, yeah. right? So, event, what I did was, and, and the other thing was, you know, I kept the original watch list for, what, 11 straight years. Mm. Uh, and, and it was 11 consecutive years, and I tweak it every year, but I didn't really fundamentally make changes. Right. But there were all kinds of things happening in the course of those 11 or 12 years, I was sort of ignoring in the watch list to some extent, which means maybe we'll have to throw out every watch list decision <laughs> prior to this year. Uh, People, the winners from previous years, they're not going to have to <laughs> throw, give back their award, are that, they? Yes, they'll have to send their badge back <laughs> immediately. They'll have to destroy the GIF file, <laughs> the JPEG out the window. Um, so. It, like you had things like, for example, customer success management, which when I started watch this, was, nobody ever heard of it. Right. It didn't really exist. Well, it did, but it didn't exist by that name and, by, and certainly wasn't sophisticated. But so I didn't have a question asking in the customer question, what's your customer success program like? Right, so I had to add that. I had to add a few other questions. I had to, I had to change the category list substantially by adding a lot of more yeah. customer facing categories because you know, I can't be pure CRM either because no. so many things have been transforming there. And then I had to tweak a lot of the sort of secret stuff too and, and then change the weights. And so it was, it was a pretty massive effort. So how many people, how many winners were there this year? Well, actually this is by far the lowest total ever. Uh, I had two winners with distinction, no elites for the first time. Wow. Since I announced elites existed. That's okay. We need to get away from the elites. Anyway. That's right. That's <laughs> <laughs> one of the goals of my life is to fight the elites anyway. So no elites, two winners of distinction, and 12 winners, which is probably a little more than half than the last lowest total wow. I had. So, and, and the interesting thing about it was that the, I, I'm not going to reveal what it was, but there wasn't even anything marginally close to an elite, right? Wow. Not even marginally close. Well, to be honest, the other side of it is I made it, I made a very, look, every year I've made it a little tougher. This year I decided to be a complete schmuck, basically. <laughs> <laughs> and I really, I look, look, I have all these like things that I'm looking for that involve a lot of different factors that are not indicated at all in the questions that I'm watching for how people say things, how they present things, what they do, how they work, all of this. I'm watching, I'm watching for things that they do mention, that they don't mention, that they should mention, that they, that they shouldn't mention. Right. That I'm watching all of that. Favorite sports team? 
that if they don't say the Yankees, <laughs> it's an automatic deduction. <laughs> so any any company out of Boston's in trouble uh, automatically. Although sorry, HubSpot. Pega did win. Pega, yeah. Right. There you go. So uh, then, so what I did was this year, unlike the past, where also you could either enhance your score or or uh, subtract from it. I mostly look for what was the bad stuff. If mm. yeah, I happen to run across a good thing, I did give you the points for that. But yeah, but typically, I was looking for the negatives. All, right. all the things they do to make the scores worse. Wow. Yeah. All right, so you put the list out today. Yes. And were you surprised at the, the, the two winners? Were you surprised that they won or the order that they won? Yeah. Do you want to say who the winners are? Well, the... So these were the winners with distinction. Winners with distinction. The two winners with distinction. One was Salesforce, and the other one was Adobe. And this year, the highest scorer was Adobe, and that's only the second time since uh, the awards, since I announced the highest scorer every year, that Salesforce has been um, not the highest. Wow. Uh, Blackboard one year was higher than Salesforce that. too, yeah. and that was it. I mean, one of the reasons you know for for that was uh, you got to take a look at Adobe. It's funny. It kind of jives with something I've been saying about Adobe recently. I used to say the big 4.5, and this year I started calling them the big 4.8, right? <laughs> because they're not quite the five yet, but they're, they're missing a point too. Well, yeah, at, the, <laughs> at this point they are missing a <laughs> point too, and and you know, but they but with the uh, the um, uh, acquisitions of Magento and and uh, Marketo. Marketo, I mean, those were huge for Adobe, and and the other thing is to their credit, and this is kind of a big deal, they are sticking directly with their plan to build an open ecosystem mm -hmm. and to, to uh, take their pieces, their varying clouds, and build a platform to actually sit them under, or sit them on. Yeah. A and they're doing this, they're succeeding at it, uh, both systematically and, and they're managing to integrate the fact that they are, on the one hand, one of the most creative companies in the world, and on the other hand, complete geeks <laughs> at the most fundamental bit and byte level I've probably ever seen for a company, and somehow they managed to make both of them work. Well, since we're here in Seattle, uh, we're getting ready to attend the Microsoft BizApp Summit, the partnership that Adobe has with Microsoft, what, did that play any? Yeah, absolutely. Right. Uh, I mean, look, I'm not going to go into the strengths and the weaknesses for now. I will when the article yeah. I write on each of uh, the winners comes out, but but that partnership is a cornerstone partnership for both companies, really, and, and that's you know evidenced by the fact that Microsoft's going to be at the Adobe Summit, and Adobe's going to be here yeah. if they can get through the snow. What do you th yeah. <laughs> <laughs> What do you call this partnership again? I call it the GAR partnership. G A R. Get a room. <laughs> the get a room partnership. This thing is like a level of intimacy that's Garp. almost uncomfortable. It's the get a room partnership. <laughs> Word of oh, GAR. <laughs> oh, that's, oh my God. <laughs> Change the whole nature <laughs> of that phrase <laughs> in one letter. <laughs> Good work. <laughs> Completely took all the sex out of it. <laughs> all right. So, all right. So, uh, but the other, of course, the other distinction winner, Salesforce. Salesforce is always, you know, they're, look, they, they're the alpha, really. And, st and at a lot of levels, even though they didn't have the highest score, they are still the alpha. You know, the thing with Salesforce, though, it's not that they got worse. It's that all the other companies are getting increasingly competitive, mm -hmm. right? And that the, the playing field is starting not to level yet, but it's on the way to that kind of battle. And, you know, we're seeing that with, look, the, uh, it's the other winners. You know, you look at it, it's not just uh, Oracle, SAP, and, uh, and Microsoft, all who won, but, you know, you see companies in other specific, like Pegasystems right. won this year, Infor won. And, you know, Infor was a bit of a surprise, I have to say, but you know, because what's what we discussed in a prior episode, but they, they deservedly won, right? Mm -hmm. And But those are, those are big companies who can compete with Salesforce or anyone else on the block. And, and when it boils down to it, Pega has been showing us uh, an engagement platform yeah. that is a real engagement platform. And it's interesting because their engagement platform is built on business process automation. Yeah. It's, and it's a little different perspective coming from them than some of the other guys that are on yeah. the list for some of the same reasons. And, and the other thing which was fascinating was Velocity won again, but Viva won for the first time too. Now that, honestly, Viva won for the first time because it's the first time they ever submitted. But, you know, it's fascinating, but when you look at Viva, uh, you know, they're at 
800 and something million dollar company now. And they're on one vertical, yeah. life sciences. They have, I think, their market share is 70%. I mean, it's one of the most dominant companies I've ever seen in a vertical anywhere, and yeah. they're a paradigm for all verticals, right? So it's like what, like what Black Barn is. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Right. I mean, you know, Viva, Viva, and the other thing with both Viva and Velocity is their management teams. I, I, to be honest, especially Velocity, my God. I mean, Velocity's management team probably has, if you take the 10 people, they probably have 5,000 years <laughs> of experience in, in I, that thing. I heard they were quick, too. <laughs> 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 All right, Viva Velocity. I got to ask about Virant and yeah, the V. They here. won too. <laughs> I think that's the key to the whole thing. I <laughs> yeah, it. If your name starts with a V, you're pretty much assured of a victory. Oh, <laughs> so, there you go. Um, yeah, Virant won, and again, Virant Virant's a unique case in its own way too, because on the one hand, a lot of what they emphasize is not. In, they, they, they did a very good job with their submission, really, because if you look at their general stuff, which I did, obviously, because right. I do all the ancillary research, they're very much em emphasizing workplace performance in addition to uh, engagement. But smartly, of course, since this is customer facing, not employee facing per right. se, although it plays a part, um, they emphasized their, the framework that they built around customer engagement and they did enough to win, you know, and, and, and it was verified, another V. <laughs> <me. laughs> By, by my work uh, in research outside. So, you know, you had a lot of really, uh, really, really good entries. I, I, some of them, one, look, I, one of the things I added this year was, and, and this is one of the secret sauces I'll give away because it'll make everything so much more pleasant next year, <laughs> is I actually gave a small incremental boost for the quality of the presentation of the report. Mm. I mean, you're a professional company, you have to reflect that in the report you right. give, right? And just, if you just imitate, you didn't lose anything for not doing it, but some of the companies, like Thunderhead's report was gorgeous, wow. right? It was a beautiful report and they gained something on that. So, and that brings up another thing, because one of the things that I, I found fascinating when I was doing this was the trends that I began pulling out of all these companies. Because, you know, I gave the data and there was, you know, 70 plus companies and one disqualification. Mm -hmm. um, from, were they from Boston? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was actually the New England Patriots that submitted <laughs> directly. Yeah, so yeah, I, I, I immediately disqualified them. <laughs> <laughs> it was like automatic disqualification. Um, <laughs> but uh, the trends were really interesting. One was, the one we already discussed, which is verticals. The, and that's a greenfield, man. Uh, yet, you have companies who have taken advantage of, you know, Velocity, whose model is multiple verticals, five. And then Viva, where a lot of Velocity leadership came from, right, which is one vertical and just dominating the crap out of that. And then, um, and then you had the big guys like Oracle, Salesforce, SAP, and Microsoft all emphasizing their vertical strategies, you know, and, and the and you know, you look at SAP, my God, man. Hmm. They have like 24 verticals. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you look, and the interesting thing was, um, you know, outside, they all, what was fascinating, Microsoft, Oracle on the hospitality side, of this was just independently researched, uh, and um, SAP all have sports verticals, Salesforce does not, right? Um, and you know what, I mean, the thing that made me, look at that, you know, without the fact that, you know, you and I are involved so much in seat, was that's a vertical that doesn't earn you a ton of money. Right. But it earns you the kind of credibility and street cred and, and just panache, a really. Lot of exposure. Oh my <laughs> God. It's incredible. I think, you know, I think that kind of thinking and, and you know, you got guys like Scott McMillan and SAP who are just like made for it and coming from that sports world who are, are gonna tear it up. You know, so, but that uh, verticals right now as a whole, you know, Salesforce is releasing, even as of today, some health sciences, new capabilities. Yeah, it's got uh, mm -hmm. You know, there's, there's a ton, of, uh, all these companies have substantial vertical presence and interest, and that's one. And the other one, which was fascinating to me, was the customer success programs themselves. Yeah. Which was, yeah. the maturity of them was just, unbelievable. I mean, one of the things, when, when I saw the, the varying discussion from the varying companies, they all laid out 
highly concrete methodologies with KPIs that are very specific, with cases of success that they've had, with numbers of people who are assigned strictly to that function. And, and let me tell you, the ones who did it well, no KPI was related to upselling, cross-selling, or revenue. Now, a lot of them were related, interesting, the KPIs were related to retention, mm -hmm. obviously, mm -hmm. right? Because the, the job is keep the customer happy to right. keep the customer, right? And they do it, and, and, but, the, but the maturity of these things was just seriously impressive, even though they were very different programs. Right. I mean, ser and, and believe me, a successful customer success program is getting you somewhere with me on this one, because I'm finding that to be one of the most important areas in all of our industry, and then finally, I guess the final two trends which I thought were really interesting, one was there's no way in hell I'm going to defeat CX as a technology. <laughs> I've tried so hard to do that. It's like me trying to keep CRM as a strategy. <laughs> it's, like, I, I, it's like so many claims for CX technology. Yeah, no. Unbelievable. So I'm, I'm, in the I'm towel, pretty right? much going to, look, I'm still going to publicly say it's not. I'm not going to fight it when someone throws it at me. Yeah. Uh, I just, uh, there's yeah. no way to win it. But CXCE, customer engagement, were first in, used interchangeably a lot, which is a mistake too, but uh, hopefully my book when it comes out will fix that part. <laughs> um, but I will tell you this, they are dominant even in the highly integrated CRM specific companies. And you saw that in multiple ways. Like when you, you saw these companies who were putting forward integrated sales, marketing, customer service, which is one thing that was happening. And you know, a number of the companies were beginning to expand from a single area of what we call CRM, whether it's F SFA or customer service, to a broader, uh, a broader portfolio. And then you, know, you had the companies like BPM Online who already integrated deeply that way. Yeah. But engagement and experience are were the, was effectively the painting that painted the picture for why the integrations. And Customer 360 has come all the way back into the forefront with Salesforce announcing it. But, but many of the, of the submitters were talking about integrated customer views, fully integrated from all sources. And, and you had all of that. So that was one thing that was notable and, and CE and, and CX were the frame for all that. And the other one was the absolute immaturity in two categories. One is your specialty, conversational interfaces. There's a lot of companies that, almost every company indicated, uh, literally almost every one, indicated a serious interest in it. Very few have executed well on it. Well, even the serious interest wasn't there until after Dreamforce. A lot of folks were, you know, I talked to a lot of folks about it, and they were, eh, it's not a priority, it's not something our customers are asking for, but after Benioff got on stage at Dreamforce and basically said that's, they're going in the conversation CRM, that all of a sudden that interest really spiked. Well, I will tell you what, um, I would say fully two thirds of the submissions had some discussion about conversational interfaces in some capacity, which was really impressive. On the other hand, it set more in roadmaps than it did in reality, right? right, right it right, didn't right. sit anywhere in the immediate future for a lot of these companies. Right. Some, of course, yes, like right. Einstein Voice, you know, things like that. The other thing which I, I found really interesting, and it goes to the heart, was the, was the, the how few companies actually understood influencer programs. Salesforce does clearly. Absolutely. If I had to pick two companies that understand it, and I think a third that's, the big four, I think, are beginning to really get it. I think as far as advanced programs go, Salesforce and yeah. SAP, I think Microsoft is certainly getting it. Here we are, right? right? Uh, <laughs> but not fully, none of them, well, Salesforce gets it fully and SAP does get it fully, meaning, Look, when it boils down to we're called influencers, but we're independent analysts, right. really. I mean, and so that puts us still with analyst relations. Right. But then companies like Salesforce treat journalists as influencers, treat subject matter experts in particular industries as influencers, treat specific highly skilled people like Silvana, Bullion, you know, as influencers. Under, they understand that way. SAP, one of the things they do exceptionally well is interact with academics. 
which right. is to me a mess of green fields for people, right? Yeah. I mean, it's a great area for them to go, and there's an enormous amount of influence in that world from the people who are publishing. The books may be boring, right? but they're important, right? right? And they have a lot of data at their disposal to use. And these yeah. are guys whose entire life is spent on finding out the answers to questions that these technology companies need to do. Right. I'll give you one example that was actually many years ago, not related to the current uh, SAP submission. Uh, I remember Ma Malcolm Kimberlin, who runs Business Influencers for SAP, told me a story about these. They had a CIO council uh, that actually was put together to fund programs for training in colleges. So they mm. gave, I, I, I want to say, and this is just possibly faulty memory, Western Michigan, they gave them like 600,000 or a million and a quarter dollars to uh -huh. fund a program that would train people who would eventually learn SAP, who then would go into the SAP structure. You remember what we were talking about with Raju a couple right. of weeks ago with Zoho University. Right. Now that's their own version of it, right. but these are, this is going to establish universities right. and bringing the professors to teach, but these are significant amounts of money that the CIO Council, who are all SAP customers, committed mm. to funding academics, right, and academic programs. And that to me is just good money spent well and smart for the technology companies. The only one who talked about academics in the entire, uh, in the entire submissions was SAP. Wow, okay, all right. So, you are going to be rolling out the actual individual write-ups yep. over the span of... Uh, Probably by the end of June, they'll be done. Okay. And you're going to be putting up the, the post on the EMI winner. Yeah, that's, that's done already. It's coming out on Wednesday. Unlike the watch list, for the, this is the emerging companies. It's sort of... It's me missing CRM Idol a great deal, <laughs> is what it is. Uh, I love that pro. That, we, that was one of the best things we ever did, wasn't it? That was fun. It really was. It was hard, but it was fun. Yeah. But um, there's only one winner to that. Wow. Yeah, well, there only will only be one winner ever. It's not like none of the other ones met. Look, none of these would have won the watch list, not a single one of them, including the winner of, of this. Right. Right. On the other hand, this is a company that won, which, of course, I'm not going to announce till Wednesday. Wednesday morning, it will be out on ZDNet, though, yep. uh, at 9 a.m. Eastern Time. Um, but it's a company that has the most potential for breaking out sometime this year or early next year. If they do, but there's things they still have to do to make to actually break out, but they're the closest to it. And what that simply means is they're more of a company than just an institution, I mean, a technology with an institution wrapped around it. This is a company being a company. Right. And that's the, it's the one that showed me the most. Okay, so to summarize, the list is a little bit shorter than it has been in the past. Yeah. Fewer winners that there's no overall one that hit that top mark. Not even close. Not even close. Uh, were there any surprise winners? The, well, in a matter of speaking, I mean, Viva's a surprise winner because they're a first time winner. Right. So it makes it's always a surprise when first time would, submission right and they are one right that's yeah. only happened that's, that's happened like the Mariano Rivera of <laughs> watch this that's right <laughs> we've even perfected a cutter <laughs> <laughs> and they <day> won <laughs> immediately uh, and the other one was uh, I guess a little surprising I mentioned was Infor because yeah. I I didn't see what I was hoping to see out of them over the year but it, as it turns out and maybe just because I didn't see it right maybe other people did uh, their submission was certainly compelling enough and then my, my the research when I checked into it uh, supportive enough for them to actually be a worthy winner that was a little bit surprising for me mm -hmm. I, I just I I had seen a lot of promise in them when I had gone to their um, analyst summit in March and and then the com you know complete turnover in their CRM or CX group whatever they're calling it and uh, and then a lot of other changes and then just you know, other than a few press releases, not seeing much out in the market from them. Right. And yet, apparently, they are out there. And you know where they're very strong again? Verticals. They, they have some verticals where they own it. And the other thing they're very strong, design UI UX. And mm -hmm. another thing they're very strong in, is, and, and the verticals they're very strong in are very specific. They're like manufacturing, distribution, logistics, you know, that, the, the kind of the hardcore blue collar verticals, mm -hmm. that the ones that, get all the stuff done, the mechanics of stuff done, right. that they're very, very strong in that area. And then the other thing they're very, very good at 
um, is linking the supply chain to the CX side, mm. at least in principle, not necessarily in technology. What would the, be the one piece of advice you would give the folks that are going to submit next year in order for them to get the scores up to what they were in the past? Well, the first piece of advice is check all the boxes I tell you to check you're <laughs> going to be disqualified. <laughs> That's advice number one. The other one, look, what I, I, I've offered for those who didn't win, I've offered 30 minutes free consulting time on why you didn't win, not on anything else. That's all it's going to be about, right? Uh, whether you want it to be about something else or not. Uh, and I, I'd suggest highly, even though it's going to spend a lot of my time, because it's 35 hours in there somewhere, um, <laughs> but I suggest you take me up on the offer and you and learn from, look, ultimately I'm the only judge <laughs> so even as objective as the numbers look, it's still my opinion, right? And I, I'm not saying it isn't. But I've, I've done this for 13 years. I've honed it pretty well. It's a fairly complex set of things you've got to look at. And, it, and it's both relative and absolute in the way I look at all of these things. So there's going to be something useful in whatever I say. At least out of the 30 minutes, there's probably a minute at least of useful <laughs> information. The other thing is for the companies that did win, you got an hour uh, of free consulting time. Uh, and that's on anything you want. However, I take half of that and talk to about the things that you didn't do so well on in that, look, there were no elites, okay? Yeah. One way or the other, there were no elites and there was a considerable shortfall between the distinction and the elite scores. So, uh, <laughs> find out why. Find out why in the next episode of <laughs> CRM Players. Brought to you by uh, nothing yet. <laughs> nothing <laughs> yet. By, by the way, we would like a sponsor. We don't want to be brought to you by the snow from up there. <laughs> Actually, uh, this is the gray uh, Ooh, yeah. sweater hoodie <laughs> Wait, the, edition of the Players. Well, what's, what's that the uh, commercial with the extreme, the extreme... Oh, no, that's, you wouldn't know. That's for the Virginia Lottery. <laughs> <laughs> okay, <laughs> forget it. Well, on that note, we better get out of here because we may get snowed in. Over and not only that, we may get, by the time we get done with this, if we don't get out of here, there'll be a reception sitting right <laughs> on top of us. And on that note, we'll catch you next time.